come back in the Mazda 626 in the Toyota Corona and pick me up around 4 o'clock after the game. So I'm in the bar. And I get in just as kickoff is starting. And the Giants are getting the ball. And the ball's in the air, and it comes down to the goal line, and the Giant takes it back to the Eagles 40. And I go, fuck yeah! 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 <laughs> and I look around, and it's like an E.F. Hutton commercial. I got 30, 35 eyes on me, and then I raise my head above the people, and I look at the green. And I'm in the Eagle Bar. I'm straight down the line from Philadelphia. I'm the only giant fan in the bar. I got quiet. I did my little cheers. Got quiet, did my little cheers. We lost by 20 points. So they picked me up at 4 o'clock. And of course, I'm lonely, I'm embarrassed, my team lost, and I got a load on. So we're talking... Like at the UN, we wouldn't be communicating. There were different languages. I was blabbing. They were down at the beach. At best, they had one or two beers, some iced tea. So they pick me up and they take me to Cranes, if anybody knows, in Ship Bottom in Long Beach Island. So Cranes was a big bar then, and it's a big bar now. And you walk in and it's roll out the barrels. Well, you know, it's that, and God bless America. And then they start singing, This land is your... And I think it's a fucking communist song. They think it's like an American. I love it. So I'm enjoying Cranes. And, you know, I was known as uh, uh, Bud Sinko. Five Buds, and I was out of it. So I go, I'm going to take a nap. I'm going in the car. So I go in the car, and I take a nap. And I wake up with a second wind, and it's like two hours later, and I walk into Cranes, they're going nuts. I look at my wife, she's got a round head, it looks like a Chinaman, and I start calling her Shrimp Toast. So I got Shrimp Toast, Pete and Linda, John and Helen, and all of John Harvey's family, and we're all singing along with Kate Smith. <laughs> we're having a great time. It's now about 11 o'clock. We gotta leave the island. And this is a time when everybody checks in and finds out who's the least drunk and who's driving. So we decide that, we get in the cars, we're about to leave the island, we say goodbye to John's family, and we both start driving, driving, and of course, I was, I was pretty straight. I said, oh shit, look. And Michelle looks at the uh, gas, she goes, we have nothing. So we pull over, and they go, you have no gas, right? Neither we. So it's now getting near midnight on Long Beach Island on Sunday night going into Labor Day, and there are no gas stations open. Now, Pete and Linda were both engineers, and Pete worked for the feds, and Linda worked for Port Authority, and she goes, my boss is on the island, and I know he's in ship bottom, and I think I know the address, so let's try a couple of blocks, and we'll go down the blocks, and maybe we'll find him, and maybe he'll be nice to us. So she was in a very aggressive girl, and um, I thought we were in good hands, and we were going down the blocks, going down the blocks, and she goes, that's his voice, and it was a boss. So we knock on the door and we explain the situation. We have no gas and the first thing these four drunk guys say is, of course, come in. So we go in. And it's a weird house. It's only four guys. There's no girls. It's midnight. We just came out of a bar. It's real deflation, but we got a place to sleep. So we're kind of checking it out. So there's two guys sitting in the living room and they're watching something on TV and there's two guys in the kitchen and they're playing this game. And this game is, you tell me a story and I'll tell you a story, and if your story sucks, you've got to take a shot. <laughs> so I don't like this game, so I get out of the room. John follows me, but Peter stays. So now he's sitting with Linda's boss and another guy, and they're playing a game among the three of them. If you tell a good story... The other two guys have a shot, and if you don't, you've got to have a shot. 
So we're sitting in the other room watching TV. We're bored. It's too late. We're looking for music. We're looking for beers. So we walk back into the kitchen, and Peter, our friend, has the guy with his like gun arm in a headlock. And this guy is not the boss, but he's the other guy. And the other boss, the other guy, the boss, is begging him, please take the guy out of your headlock. He goes, but he told a bad story, and he won't take a drink. <laughs> and John and I look at each other with that knowing look. Peter's at that point. And his arm, his arm was like the top of a tank. It was so hard for John and I to drag it off. The guy had an imprint of like Peter's arm across his face. And it was time to go to bed because there was nothing to say. So they threw out a couple of uh, sleeping beds and he said, look, there's one or two beds here. Why don't you go find a bed? And if you don't get a bed, sleep on the floor. And we'll, you know, we'll see you guys in the morning. So we all go to bed, and I'm with Michelle, and we end up in the bottom of a bunk bed, just like 20 years before, with my dad and Lori, my brother. So we go to sleep, and of course, after that kind of day and the second drinking, I go to sleep almost immediately, and it's like dreamland, and I see candy, and I see this. Then I wake up and I gotta take a wicked piss. And now I'm in a strange house, but I kinda know I went once. You go down the hall, you turn left, and it's right there. So I went down the hall, I turned left, and I'm looking for the light, and I say, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm just gonna aim for the middle. And I take my bird out and I start peeing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I start hearing this. Hey! Hey, you're peeing on me! Hey! Stop! Stop! You're peeing on me! I go, oh shit! And I cut it off. And I run back to the bunk bed. And I go in next to Michelle. And she goes, what's the matter? And I said, don't say a word, because otherwise I'm dead. <laughs> and I'm holding her. Holding her like I haven't held her since we first started dating. And I'm like, oh dear God. So the guy's blah 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 blah. He only gets up and he comes into the hallway, the lights go on, we can see it out the door. What's the matter? This guy was just peeing on me. This guy was just peeing on me. Come back and look. Come back in the hall where my sleeping bag is. I don't see it, I just hear it. <laughs> One, two, three. So where is it? It was right there! Where is it? I don't see a sleeping bag. It was right there! It was right there! There's no sleeping bag, there's no piss, go back to sleep, you're drunk. Good night. Thank God. Michelle says, you're so fucking stupid. <laughs> Turns away from me. Which ain't a bad way to turn. But not this night. And um, we go to sleep. And I, thank God. Oh, God. Anthony, St. Jude, all of them. Hopeless cases, lost things, everything. <laughs> so we get up in the morning. And as you would imagine, we were not offered breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so now the six of us, John Helen, Pete Linda... Michelle and I are walking towards the Mazda and the Corona. And Pete and Linda are laughing. I don't know what's going on. Michelle's horrified still. And I turn around and I want to find out what's so funny. Linda tells me. She goes, remember last night when you pissed on the guy? How do you know? She goes, well, John and Helen decided they wanted to have sex. So they ran through the hall, just as this was starting to heat up. They grabbed the sleeping bag and they went down to the beach. <laughs> so by the time they got back there, my boss and his friend, who you pissed on, the sleeping bag was gone. <laughs> and John and Helen just looked at me and we said, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. And we rode home.
And I'm in the car thinking, my God, the apple does not fall far from the tree. Thank you. Oh, Thomas.